Australia with uh, Peter Korn Komapijit, who is from Thailand, and myself, uh, the, the French part of it. Uh, we are really working on the best practice, and we are trying always to highlight as much as possible uh, <clears throat> the leaders and the people that are making, doing the, the best work in, in this field. Our standards have been really, we have 191 standards, and these standards have been always backed up by science, by veterinarian, by specialists that have 15 or 20 years of experience in the field. Uh, we have, from the beginning, had the very pragmatic approach of the reality and what's happening there, and we always base all our criteria on science, on fact and not on emotions. We, we really try to be very clear on these aspects. We are really, really, really focusing on every new studies that are uh, coming up regarding the captive elephants. And we have a very strong partnership with uh, advisor from the Chiang Mai University and the world famous veterinarian in, in, the, in the captive elephant business. So this is really uh, to explain to you where we, we are coming from. Uh, we are not doing advocacy. It means that our job is really to work in the camps, to uh, support uh, the managers and to help them to better understand how to bring a better welfare for the elephant and better well-being for the mouth working with the elephant. Uh, just a quick look at uh, the different categories that we have into our standards. So we have eight different categories. Um, some of them are global, are more uh, focusing on the general management, um, how it works, um, and also for sure all the, the legal approach related to the re registration, the ID, microchips, I mean everything that is uh, helping to be sure that the elephants are not uh, coming from the wild, and because more right now many elephants are born in captivity. We also ask uh, the camp to produce annual reports, to produce documents that are going to help us to better understand the way they are dealing with the management. Uh, so this is a, the general part of it, the first part of it. Then we have another part that is related to the employees, and we want to make sure that uh, they have uh, a contract, that they have also an insurance, that uh, they have uh, the opportunity to see a doctor quite regularly and all this aspect that is really focusing on the staff. So this is an important point for us. Then the biggest part of our criteria is all the criteria related to the elephant welfare. And it's about the diet, it's about where they stay, where they are living, um, all the different aspects, if they are female with the pregnancy, breeding eventually, um, where they stand at night, oh, so we, uh, when we audit the elephant camp, we go everywhere around. We visit the different areas in the camp, and we, we go in the areas where uh, usually uh, the tourists, the clients, they are not really uh, visiting these areas. We visit everything. Um, then we are also focusing on the activities. So uh, it's going to be um, all the kind of activity for us. We don't believe that riding, for example, is wrong if it's done the right way. So we don't judge the activity. We are just checking that the activity is done in the right manners. And for that, we have a series of uh, criteria, of questions for each of the different activities. And it can be riding, it can be feeding, bathing, walking with the elephant, uh, all these kind of activities that we are checking really very, very uh, thoroughly. Then we have also some other, uh, cat another category which is more about the camp quality, and waste management and all these aspects. So to see if also it's in line with the sustainability standards. We have criteria about visitor safety. We want to make sure that there is no risk for the visitors to, to work uh, with, uh, to visit this camp. And the seven, uh, number seven is about the community. We want to make sure also that the local community can benefit uh, from um, the elephant activity, from the elephant camp activity. So it's going to be the relationship with the farmers, it's going to be all these aspects and uh, also what is sold in, in, uh, in the camp. Sometimes there is a shop where it's possible to sell uh, the local handcraft and all this stuff. 
And we have the category number eight, which is only for uh, the camp that are uh, focusing on conservation. Right now, we have only one camp that managed to pass this set of criteria for conservation. It's uh, Elephant Conservation Center in Sayaburi in Laos, because they are doing a very, 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 very deep job about conservation. And we wanted to highlight the fact that many camps are pretending to do conservation, but in fact, they don't do the real conservation, which is related to um, uh, reproduction, especially in this kind of country like Laos, where there is a struggle in uh, the number of elephants that are still alive in the country. And potentially some of them are going even uh, further and proposing to uh, rewild some elephants. So this kind of project doesn't, it don't happen everywhere. And we want it to be uh, ready for the camps that are uh, committing to this conservation. So this is just a big overview. I will not get too much into details. I want just to also introduce you how the audit, uh, the auditing part, how it is working. We have always two auditors participating, participating to the audit. One is going to be with an international background about um, auditing, about collecting information. And the second one is going to be a local, speaking the local language because also we need to discuss with the Mahout, we need to discuss with the veterinarian, we need to discuss with different uh, people that are over there and for that it was very important for us to have uh, two uh, auditors at the same time. Then we start the, the audit with the meeting with the management team, with the chief Mahout, with the veterinarian, with all the people that are involved in, in, in this part which is going to be also a lot of uh, documents that we are going to check later on. Before the audit, we ask the camp to send us all the documents so we don't arrive there with knowing nothing. We have already a lot of documents that we managed to collect before the audit. It can be uh, the official documents, some policies, procedures. It's going to be also some pictures, a video eventually. So when we arrive in a camp, we have already a knowledge about what's happening there. And after the, the, the first meeting, we go for a, a walk. Uh, and that's when we are visiting all the different areas that are not usually accessible for the people. <coughs> so back of the house, food storage, uh, elephant dunk storage, all the different areas. And we, we check it like really in details. We spend a lot of time. We also go to check the mount accommodations. We want to see uh, what are their, conditions, their living conditions and also because again we are talking about well-being and we are also particip participating to the activities uh, if uh, there is riding activities we are going to see how it's working how they prepare the elephant <clears throat> how the, the clients are going to um, get on the elephant and what kind of saddle they are using um, if there is a bathing activity, the same, we are checking how it works. Feeding activity also, we, we look at it. Uh, and we, we really want to, to make sure that uh, it's not only words, but in reality, when there are clients coming in, it's working the way people are telling it's going to work. And then we are following, I mean, we are reviewing the criteria together and we spend a lot of time to check all the documents and to make sure that everything is in place. Following these audits, then depending on uh, the results, if they manage to achieve or not to achieve all the criteria, they may have some time to finish and to, to, be, to send to us the last documents that could be missing or to uh, sometimes rebuild some part of uh, uh, the camp. We have been in places where, for example, um, uh, the, the feeding area was not really um, strong enough. It means that the elephant could push uh, too much on the wood that was in front of them so we asked uh, the camps to uh, camp managers to uh, rebuild something that would be uh, better for the guest safety and also for the elephant safety so sometimes there are small uh, uh, improvements that the, the camp need to achieve in a short period of time and then depending on how many criteria we manage to achieve they will uh, be graded with different levels uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, now I want to discuss a little bit more 
about why certification is improving animal welfare and human well-being. What we realized when we have been visiting many camps, and we did visit a lot of camps in, in the past five years, what we realized is that there is a, <clears throat> a lack of knowledge. It means uh, right now, for example, if, if you're in Thailand and you want to open a camp, it's quite easy. You, uh, you need to rent uh, an area, you need to rent some space, and then you can rent the elephant. So it means that some people that have elephant camp or created elephant camp may have no knowledge about uh, the management of the elephant camp. And our system, when we provide all these criteria, all these standards, we help the managers to better understand how it works and how you deal with elephants and how you can manage the elephant the best way. So this lack of knowledge was for us um, very interesting to see. And, and then we, we thought we can bring, we can make a difference. We can bring this knowledge, we can bring more uh, example, best practices, we can share the best practices. Uh, we realized that in some places where the welfare is not really good, is not because the people, they don't care about the elephant. It's more because they don't know how to deal with them the right way. And I'm not speaking about the maout, even if sometimes maout need trainings also, but I'm speaking about the management from the management side. And, and then, so that was the first discovery. And from us, it was really important to say, our standards, they are also embedding a lot of information that can help to get a better management. Then second problem that we realize is a confusion coming from the media because when you have messages saying that uh, chains are not good, that using the bull hook is not good, it is really confusing the people that have uh, <clears throat> the responsibility of an elephant camp. And for marketing purpose and to get clients to come to their place, some camps have removed uh, the hook or some place are pretending that they are not using chains anymore. Uh, this is again a, a big problem because uh, we believe that hook are mandatory to control the elephant. It doesn't mean to beat the elephant, but to take care and to get good control of the elephant. Uh, the, the hook is a tool and it depends on how you use it. So again, this is a strong position from us which is following uh, the specialist and which is following the veterinarian approach about this kind of tools. So this confusion from the media that came to the camp made the manager take some bad decision and not stand up for uh, finally the animal welfare and also the human well-being. Because if you have to take care of an elephant, which is three or four tons, you need some tools also to control them. And to remove these tools, potentially would bring these people into danger. So that's what we have been also focusing on and trying to push quite a lot uh, in, in, in the past. Then also we realize, and we have been under a lot of pressure, we are still under a lot of pressure <coughs> from individuals, from uh, activists, from campaigners, uh, with uh, different um, targets regarding this topic. And the tour operators have been very supportive to our initiative from already four years, because as John mentioned at the beginning of this talk, uh, there is a need to, to, to know what's happening in the camp and to have somebody from uh, an external and auditing, what we are providing an external auditing body to enter the camp and get very deep into details and check all the different areas. So <clears throat> for that, uh, we have been uh, under this pressure. We are still under the pressure, depending on uh, because of our position, especially uh, regarding uh, the chains and the hook and, and riding and all these aspects. Um, but we stand quite strong because we believe that as long as we follow uh, the, the, the scientists, as long as we follow the specialists that are going to tell us uh, what should be done and what should not be done, we are on the right path. Then why it's improving all the animal welfare and human well-being? Because the standards that we are providing, it is, it is a list that is going to help everybody like a toolbox. It's going to help them through the criteria 
could say, okay, this is what we need to do if we want to have the right management of the elephant and also the right management of the mahout working with the elephant. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, easy to understand that if you treat well your staff, this staff is also going to treat well the elephant. And sometimes in camps where there are uh, animal welfare issues, there are also <coughs> human or staff issues. And that's have, like this domino effect on the elephant management. So when we provide the package to uh, the elephant camp, to the management, they receive the list of the criteria, but they will also receive the guidelines. And for each criteria, we have a long definition including example, including best practices, including pictures, including a lot of information that is available for the camp and helping them to build the right system, the right management system, the right tool, and to be ready to work in the best condition. So that's why I really believe that <clears throat> the standards are, are really very, very important, uh, so important for uh, the management and, and for the animal well-being. Then also, we can provide trainings or we have uh, partners who are able to provide trainings and these trainings can be related to uh, the elephant management or can be related to the camp management. We are even thinking right now and we are even proposing when it's <coughs> necessary some consultancy. So even to build uh, the right elephant camp. From the beginning, you, you have some choices to be done uh, regarding the feeding area if you are going to feed the elephant or regarding <clears throat> the night area where the elephant are going to sleep to make it in, to, to build it from the beginning uh, the best way to be sure that the animal will be well treated and uh, well taken care of. So that's, that's the reason why uh, I strongly believe that the certification system is really positively impacting <clears throat> the elephant and also the mahout working with the elephant uh, during this uh, time. So I have been a bit quicker than I, <coughs> I thought I would be. Maybe, uh, so I think uh, I would like to open also the discussion with people that may have some, some, uh, some question about uh, what we are doing, about also <coughs> potentially uh, the, the audit process, or if there is anything coming up relating to uh, the standards that we are now promoting in, in Southeast Asia. So, uh, John, I'm, I've, I've been very fast, maybe faster than what I expected, but at least we have time to discuss and to, to share uh, our experiences. Or if you have any question, I'm really here to, to answer and to reply to you. Okay, thank you very much, Nico. Uh, a, a very, very good talk. And as, as you know uh, from, our, from our many discussions down the years, I'm, I'm a great believer in the, the necessity of, of having standards and, and how that can help and help drive, uh, drive even basic standards and yours is far from basic can help drive, drive welfare and to drive, uh, drive things across the board. Um, uh, so are there any questions from the team on the Zoom? Um, really, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask a question, you're more than, more than welcome. If not, I'll ask if there's any on Facebook. Anyone? Okay, so my question, um, obviously we're, uh, we're facing um, everybody within any form of hospitality industry, and probably everyone in the entire world um, is, facing a, is facing a crisis at the moment uh, due to COVID. Uh, do you feel that the certification, how are the camps that you've, um, you've certified, how are they doing? And do you feel that your certification has helped them look after elephants better throughout, through, through the COVID crisis when there's, there's this lack of income? Um, I think that's, um, I mean, right now it's, it's quite complicated because uh, many camps are close. I, I think, John, there is music behind you. Of your yeah thank you uh, the, the the it's a good question I, I think right now I mean the camps we are working with um, are doing quite good I mean it's it's difficult for them because it's difficult for everybody and it's it's not 
it's not a, it's not an easy it's not an easy easy job but as they managed to implement the right management tool before as they managed manage to, to work on it quite quite well uh, i they feel, i feel that they, they 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 don't struggle as much <clears throat> as other camps so this is this is the only way because right now the certification i mean we we are still working with them we are still uh, helping them as much as possible we are trying to provide uh, information we are trying to provide uh, skills if it's possible and and to to support the camps working with us during this difficult time but uh, the certification and we try to get even also new camps working with us because we believe that this is the right time because when you have no clients no guests working and coming it's a good time also to start to work and, and to start to implement all these practices right now so we are focusing on the future on the, the after covid uh, situation that that's what we are really uh, focusing on right now. yes for sure apart from the fact there's uh, there's no money for capital expenditure um, but yes i think that's that now is the time to be doing it and now is also the time as we we in our camp are focusing on training the hoots and and moving up to the the, the improving the, the the standards of how that they can work with the elephants and how they can have the best it's it's the good it's a good time to be uh, to be focusing on yourself if you see what i mean and improving standards all the way around so i, I think that's a very a very valid point um question from ajan b b kanja is have you ever had to make an amendment to the standards if so please could you elaborate uh yeah i mean the standards have been uh, we have been working on the standards from 2015 so there have been many different steps different phases that we have been through um, we are uh, actually we are still working also with our advisors from the Chiang Mai University uh, to, um, to bring new criteria and to adapt criteria to uh, to the new activities or to, uh, to what's happening and to focus uh, we, we would like to focus on also more criteria related to uh, the elephant uh, himself, like potentially some scoring uh, regarding uh, the body score or regarding the nails. Sorry, we, we we want to get deeper into these uh, topics. So we plan now. It's 2020. We are going to review our criteria in 2021, and we will submit a new version of the of the standard and that will be validated by the advisors that are working with us. So yeah, we are, we are, we are doing our best in, into, into, this, uh, into this field, absolutely. I, and just to, uh, to, I guess, flesh that out a little bit um, from, from without my, with my captive elephant working group hat on rather than my elephant camp management hat on. It's very, very funny for a, um, a tradition that's 4,000 years old, um, that there is until there was until very 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 recently very very little science as to what was actually good for elephants and what was not good for elephants um there was a great deal of opinion um and i guess it was um it it, it makes sense because for the for the first 3980 years or probably 3000 what whatever years of doing it elephants and people worked and lived in the forest yes there was warfare going on but warfare is not good welfare for for anyone um, but certainly for logging and for everything else elephants were living in a more ideal situation um more close to their natural habitat and at least even in war times elephants could spend time in between the wars in their natural habitat and it's only really the last 30 or 40 years probably even only the last 20 years that uh, elephants have been managed in these one places away from their natural habitat as their natural habitat has disappeared. And the knowledge about how to do this is there, there was nothing standard or scientific about it. There was a lot of opinion and very, very good and qualified opinion from vets who've been working with elephants forever and managers who've been working with elephants forever. But one of the first papers from the Chiang Mai University um, suite of studies was to, to look at the management techniques of, of almost all the elephant camps in the Chiang Mai Valley. And the one thing they realized that despite all of these many years of expertise, nobody, no two camps were doing things the same way. Um, and so 
as the science comes in, and as is done, a lot being done by Chiang Mai University, but various other people around the world developing science and peer reviewing, then guidelines and knowledge about it's being constantly changed. And then companies like uh, Cap Development Standards, Asian Cap Development Standards, have to review their will. And they're all, everybody I've spoken to is is very open about the fact that if, if something new is discovered to be harmful for elephants that is general practice or if something is discovered to be good for elephants that has been thought harmful um they will have changed their standards to make that happen or to make um to, to make sure that uh, they're they're in keeping with what is is best known for uh, is now known to be best for elephants yeah, sorry absolutely I, I would like to i mean i would like just to take one example i mean it's about the riding activity because there have been so much stories in the media about riding activity uh, with people saying that this activity is wrong and we discussed with the scientists and we asked them what do you think about this activity and as long as they will tell us riding is not a problem if it's done the right way we will continue to to work with people riding elephant and mouths are riding elephants so i mean anyway it's it has also if tomorrow we have the our advisors telling us uh, you know what uh, buffing is we realize after studies that buffing is wrong for the elephant we will stop working with camps who are using the bathing activity. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's really, we, we have based our standards on science. And this is something that, unfortunately, in the elephant uh, world, there is too little science and too much emotions. And we, we, we are suffering from that because the biggest voices speaking about elephant they don't agree with the scientists and they don't care about the scientists and this is completely wrong these guys have a huge uh, impact on um on 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 everybody on everybody and potentially on the clients and it's uh, it's an inter international brainwashing about the elephant when the science is telling something different and we have been you and me i mean john for years we have been standing up and we have been like really uh, trying to explain again and again and again providing many examples and still i mean we we are we are still struggling because medias are not always on your on our side but it's changing i think that we have more and more followers that uh, agree with what we are discussing about and leaving uh, the emotional area to go to the science area yes well i i mean i'm a believer in science anyway um question almost the same question one from zach and one from ajan bichet who is an elephant expert here in thailand um first of all could you give us a few actual examples of, of the guidelines and secondly uh do you have any evidence that good taking care of elephants can improve human welfare um, and I, I think that's evidence as in it can be anecdotal um, unless you have any scientific evidence um uh Okay, um, so from the standards, um, from our website, you can access, you will not access the list of the standards, but you will access uh, the name of each standard. So if you check on our website, you will get already a lot of information about the standards. And uh, I don't want to get too deep into details here because it's 191, but we are getting very, very deep. So uh, we check the diet. So what kind of diet do we have? And if we have any doubts about the diet, we send this information to the veterinarians, to our advisors to help us to say if it's a good or balanced or not balanced diet. Uh, we check, I mean, if we speak just about the elephant, uh, <clears throat> we check also uh, where they sleep, do they sleep uh, with chain, without chain, the length of the chain, the access to the water, um, how many times they can access this water, uh, we, we have tried really to get uh, as deep as possible into and as detailed as possible into each of, of these uh, activity and, and day and night life. So I, I will, I will, I mean, if you are interested, have a look at the website and you will get all the list of the criteria. So we, you will get already more information about it. Second point, uh, I would like to tell a story that I think it's, it's an interesting story. Uh, we, we have been working in one um, uh, camp in, in Bali and because of the public pressure, the management asked the Maut not to use their uh, hook anymore. 
because they had a lot of complaints from the clients when they saw the mahout with their hook. And then when we came, when we have been to this place and when we have been before the audit and starting to discuss with them, and they told us, oh, you are doing the certification, so we should not use the hook. And we say, no, we believe that the hook is a tool and this tool has to be used to control the elephant and for the mahout safety and for the client safety. And then when we spoke with the, with, with the mahout and we told them, you can use your hook, you don't have to hide it, you don't have to be ashamed of it. As long as you use it the right way, that it's not a tool that you are using to harm the elephant, uh, then they have been so relieved and they have been thanking us during half an hour, telling us, you know, we were so scared to go and walk, work with our elephant without this tool because this is the way we work with this elephant. So in terms of well-being, I guess that working together, bringing these standards and telling them that the use of the hook is not a problem because we, we understand that they need it, uh, we have been improving their well-being and we have been improving the way they were working and potentially some accident that may have happened if they didn't have their tools to work. So, um, yes, I mean, that's one example that I could give. There are other examples, uh, especially related to um, the resting area, so that we ask some camps to change the resting area. So when the elephant are waiting between two activities that they are more space, more room, and that they are not chained all the time, and as much as possible, the limited uh, chaining time. We bring, we, we can make a difference, we can, we can help them, and, uh, and there are many more examples uh, I can share with you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I think that's that the hook one is, is, is absolutely key, because too often they're, they're told not this, Mahouts are suddenly given an instruction to either actually very very often I just hide it um, and then it, this is at, or just not to use it but they're crucially not given any other training or any other information in how to work differently and if they have been and I don't know this camp if they had been using it abusively beforehand and felt they needed it the key actually is to give them training as to how to have it but not have to use it um, and too often they're just told not to use it and that it, it, it really does it really does put the uh, mahout who doesn't have the ability and the knowledge to work in any other way in in a really very dangerous situation. So um, a, a, a something like a, a program like yours encourages the training, make sure the training is there, so the mahouts, even if they even if they were relying on it before as the only way to work with an elephant, they now actually know the different ways to do it to the point where the hook can be in the belt and there only for emergencies. So, uh, yep, I'm. Thank you for that. Uh, absolutely. And, and what you mentioned, I think it's quite important to say that um, there, is a, there is a network of also people that can provide trainings. And I, I think you have, been, you have had some trainings in, in your place already before uh, <clears throat> to train the maout and to train how the maout should train the elephant. And when we go somewhere we try also to connect the dots and when we realize that there are some needs in training and that there is a real wish from the management to get the staff better uh, understand how to train the elephant with new methods or different methods and that are not only based on, on, uh, on pain or harm uh, they want it i mean they are ready for that they are not against this kind of uh, approach uh, everyone is okay to, to try something different, and especially when these techniques are really efficient and are, are the, the, I mean the positive and negative reinforcement it's, it's working very well. So um, we provide also some support by connecting camp managers, camp owners with uh, the people who are in charge of trainings or trying to help them to access some trainings because it's more, more than needed and that's that's also, I think it's interesting because we enter these elephant camps with um, the, the, the goal, the target to, make, to, to help them to improve. We are not here just to say, okay, you get a stamp, goodbye. This is, I mean, it's, it's, it's useless. And it's, we are not going in a camp just to, to trick some uh, boxes and say, okay, you pass or you don't pass. This is part of our job. But also we are there to identify the, the areas where improvement is possible and how we can help them by providing some help. 
providing some contacts, helping the network to develop, to have a better management for everybody. So I think also it's, it's very important because there are not so many people that are entering the elephant camps with our approach. Most of the people entering the camps are all consumer or from tour operators to control a little bit, but without the right knowledge. And uh, that's it. Or the authorities are coming sometimes to check potentially uh, the DNA or to check uh, the microchip, but there is no um, approach that is, no people are going there and telling them, okay, we are going to try to help you to make it better without judgment. We are not here to judge you. We are here to support you, to take the situation how it is today and to try to go to the next level. And that's, that's really uh, our main target, our main goal. And when we start to work with a camp, it's, uh, it's a long-term relationship. We, we, we are not going to go there one year and then it's goodbye. We go there every year, we go there again and again, and we keep in touch as much as possible and to continue to, to know what's happening and to follow up what's happening over there. So that's really our approach is like this. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so next question, you're going to have to talk about one of our rivals, because as I say, we're not one of your camps uh, yet. Uh, one of these days, we will, we will get around to it. Um, as I, For those watching, we have been audited to other standards though. Uh, so Wayne is asking, can you share some best practice examples regarding elephant welfare and the management of camps? Yeah, so uh, again, the, the best practices are related to both the animal and also uh, the mahout. Uh, for me, one of the best practices is when uh, the, the, the accommodation for the mouth are decent, <laughs> where they don't sleep uh, in, in areas that you will not, I mean, keep your dog over there. So this is, uh, for me, a very good sign. And uh, we have criteria about um, staff accommodation, and we, we take care of that. Uh, the diet is really important, because uh, the diet for the elephant is like, it's essential. And when you have camps that are just... Uh, providing uh, high calorie food like bananas or um, other fruits to the elephant all day long, then they have some problems. Then they, they, they have some obesity. They have some uh, many kind of problems are coming from the food that is given to the elephant. If the elephant is in, in the wild, he's going to eat like 14 hours per day. He's spending his, his complete day to eat and he's going to take leaves from up to 60 different trees or grass. So he has a very um, complete and balanced uh, uh, diet. In captivity, uh, it's difficult to provide with the same kind of diet. So still, the, the, the veterinarian who are taking care of the elephant in the camps and who are in charge of the diet have a key role to play. And we are really focusing on this diet and really trying to understand um, how, it is, how it's balanced. And even we want to check the origin of the food because some of the food provided to the elephant sometimes has been uh, grown with chemicals. And then these chemicals are going into the elephant metabolism. So um, for me, uh, I would say, yes, the maut how they are treated, and food for the elephant, it's really something that is essential and, and really uh, it's, it's, it's central to, to everything we are talking about. Access to water, space, and socialization. This is also a very, very important point because this elephant should have the opportunity to socialize and to get closer with the one they like because they don't like each other all the time. But if they have some friends in the group of elephants, that they can spend some time together, that they have this opportunity. And this is something that we're also focusing on as a socialization area or the socialization, socialization time to, 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 to help. I mean, to help also uh, the, the, the elephant welfare is based also on their uh, socialization with the other member of the group. So I don't know if I replied to the question <laughs> the right way, but uh, this, uh, these are some examples that uh, came to my mind. I think you, you hit the nail on the head, um, very uh, spot on. Um, so Lisa is asking is, can you adapt your excellent systems for, to South Asia uh, or, or start and start? And I guess I, I, you may already do, but are you planning to operate in Nepal and India? Um, do you think your, uh, I'll just broaden out Lisa's question a little bit. Do you think your system as, as designed 
would work there and um yes and do you think are you planning to go and do that or would there would there need to be some adaptions for, for the adaptations for the for the difference in say management techniques and facilities across in south india although elephants are elephants uh, we are already operating in in, in uh, three different countries so we had to adapt some of our criteria because of different regulation uh, different um, honing system uh, in Indonesia, you don't have private, uh, uh, little private owners compared to Thailand. So we, we need already to adapt. We started with Southeast Asia. South Asia and India is a big, uh, big, big player. Sri Lanka also is a huge one. Nepal also. We are interested in this market. We didn't enter them yet, uh, but we, we would have to adapt a little bit for, uh, to the situation. But otherwise, I mean, our standards can be used almost everywhere because we always face the same kind of problems. We would adapt it, but it's going to be possible. Where we don't want to go is Africa because I mean, it's, it's another story and it's completely a uh, different approach of, uh, of the topic. But yeah, in the future, we may uh, start also to work in South Asia. We, 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 we are planning it. We have been uh, stuck with the, with the COVID right now, but we, we, are, we want also to expand to Myanmar. We would like to have more camps in, in Cambodia and, and work with, uh, with the, the camps that are really committing to, to our philosophy and our standards and to have a community also of um, elephant camps that have been certified by our company. Uh, so yes, and if there is anyone, if there is any camp that is uh, motivated or that is interested, please, uh, contact us, uh, get in touch with us, and we will we will reply to you and uh, provide you with all the information and, and everything you will need to know about uh, our processes. Great, thank you. Um, yes, and uh, worth pointing out, I think that the the standard or the guidelines that that uh, to a certain extent underpin your standards were have been written and they've been we, we have been consulting uh, through the Asian Elephant Specialist Group of IUCN with Indian welfare experts as well who are who, who know about the South Asian situation. So the guidelines are becoming applicable for that. They were originally written because they were tourist based and tourism is such a big thing in ASEAN. They were all they were written for Southeast Asia, but they, they are being adapted for uh, for um, South Asian standards as well. So yeah, it, it should be relatively easy to do. And I'm sure the Asian Elephant Specialist Group would, would support you in, in moving that one forward as well. Um, a question from Veronica, which I think we've touched upon already, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to go for it anyway because it, it's always good to, to touch. She says, while she does agree that it's dangerous for elephant and keeper to just take the elephants off the chain and the hook, with proper training on positive reinforcement, it can be done safely and also to improve animal and trainer welfare. Um, again, I think we've touched on this. What is our opinion on this? What is your opinion on this? And are there initiatives out there to support positive reinforcement training in camps? Um, and it, could it go on the certificate? Well, first of all, there are initiatives out there. We've had our target training, our own, from my side, target training workshops working for the last 10 years of positive reinforcement. And we're also working closely with um, human, uh, human Elephant Learning Program, uh, Dr. Andrew, Andrew McLean in Australia to help push those things forward. Um, and I guess the question then would be relevant, and I, I don't think we answered it last time, so just to add another angle, how does that sort of thing play in? Is it specifically mentioned in the standard that the Mahouts get that training, or is it something that you, you add in as part of your consultancy and advocacy? Not that you advocate. Mm -hmm. No, it's, 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 it's part of the standards also, uh, the, which kind of technique were used to, to train the elephant. So this is quite, uh, we, are, we, we, we focus on this point too. To remove chain and hook, uh, I, I, I love the idea. I mean, like everybody, I mean, I really love the idea. I think we have to be careful not to jeopardize uh, the safety of the people working with the elephant. And unfortunately, people die, mahout die. Uh, nobody speak about that, but it's happening a lot. And we cannot ignore it because some people believe that elephants are well better without chain and hooks, I mean, um, some elephants, you, I mean, the elephant can live up to 70 years old or 80 years old. So some elephants that are now in the industry today that are 40 or 50 years old, we even don't know what kind of uh, training they had at the beginning. And to start with fresh elephants, young elephants, that what you are doing in an enterprise is really good because you, I mean, you know the elephant, you know where they come from, and it's possible for you to, to really train them the right way with the support of the different organization. But 
I am a bit, I'm, 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 I'm afraid, I'm afraid that some people may be at risk because I dream of elephants without chain and hooks. Uh, it can be done in certain conditions with elephants that have been with the same mode for a very long time. It, it, it's possible with a lot of if, in fact. Yes, I, I, it's possible. But the problem is when you start to promote this, you have to be careful that some people don't take it for granted and would remove chain and hooks from elephants that are potentially dangerous. And that, that's my fear. That, that's where I believe that we have a responsibility to say, yes, it, it's, it's a good idea, it's good, and, and we should go for this. But it's not working with every elephant. It's not working with every mouth. And we cannot force them to go there if they don't want to do it. So it, has to, it should be done, and we promote it in our standards, but it has to be done, again, the right way and in a soft way where um, both the mouth and the elephant feel comfortable with, uh, with this uh, new situation. Uh, I mean, you have also example from your side and, and, and you can share with us, John, that uh, sometimes it's, it's very difficult to, to, to go uh, chain free and, and, uh, and hook free. So we, yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think it's uh, one thing that is often lost in, in the dogma when these people say no, no hook or no chain. Um, aside from, as I say, the training that isn't given to Mahout sometimes is that uh, building a zoo herd of elephants who can live in an area together, uh, restricted, small area together, which is, is what, what zoos do, is an extremely skilled activity and shouldn't be a tech. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't go in there as a, as a non-elephant specialist zookeeper even and say, right, I'm going to build a zoo herd. I'm going to put these four elephants together and expect them to get along and not watch the welfare, not decide to, to put the elephants that will get together who won't fight with each other together. So it is it is an ideal situation. Um, and socialization, of course, under Mahout supervision is part of, your, part of your standard and something that all elephants should do and should be part of their lives. But the idea of having them free roaming in a less than landscape, landscape sized area, and we're very lucky, I shouldn't say lucky, but we, we have about 300 acres here so we we can we can do experiments but the idea of just throwing elephants together without chains and expecting them to get along is not one that works elephants will fight in the wild they'll fight they'll just go to another valley so so building these herds and and building friendship groups as as we attempt to do here is is a very is a highly technical job and not something that should be presented as an absolute ideal unless it's being done very carefully and, and your other best practice area the elephant conservation center in Laos have put a lot of work into this for their for their pre-release and their release elephants as well so that's that's another thing it's elephant welfare if you put elephants together who are going to fight or who some elephants are there may be one elephant who'll be very happy with that because they'll be dominant but other elephants will be constantly bullied and that will increase the stress of the elephants so it's, it's not necessarily a better situation um the other thing that i would talk to for the the no chains is a lot of people are saying, okay, we're, we're chain free, therefore we're better. But they're taking elephants that would have been on a 25 meter chain in their natural habitat out in the forest at night and putting them in a five by five meter box because that's how they manage them. And that is in, in no way better for the elephant. So it all has to be looked at. I think, I think you would agree with Veronica um, that there are ways to do it and we, we should be working towards it. And um, some of us, a lot of us are working towards, and I, I do thank Captive Elephant Standards you guys and everybody else implementing standards throughout the industry for, for pushing the, the, the debate forward. Um, and as, as you said earlier, not judging going into camps and helping them get through that rather than just turning up and demanding that they suddenly change their way of doing things without putting the, doing the work behind. Um, I think that actually covers B's question as well, as the, the different ways of controlling and training elephants. Um, so, yes. So I think that is all the questions we have at the moment. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add or any last minute questions from the Zoom or from Facebook that anybody would like to ask before we sign off? If not, I will say thank you very much to Nico once again for coming on. Um, thank you again for what you're doing. I, I really believe that if we, we, we are, as everybody knows, I'm slightly, even though I've worked with captive elephants for, for over 20 years now, I'm still slightly ambivalent about elephants in captivity. But if we are to work towards improving the welfare of elephants, um, science-based, independently audited standards um, are essential. 
Um, and that's that's going to be the first step. And the good thing about the first step is you'll also be the second step because as, as you get more and more counts on board and more and more people following that, then then you will we will be going to the next steps and the next levels as well. So um, I think it's a tremendous work that you're doing. And um, although we haven't got your certification yet, as I say, we will at some point. Um, I think you are your your approach is is among the most successful for getting that done that has been tried um, others others are trying it um, and uh, and haven't quite got to your to your level of success quite yet so um, thank you very much for doing that um, I also got to say thank you very much for our sponsors Amantara Golden Triangle I'm up here in the bar it's it's 6 30 so um, it's probably time it's getting dark outside it's coming towards winter um, but thank you to Amantara for having us and for putting us on for another um, another elephant professional lecture we will have one more next wednesday um, all lined up so i've got got actually lectures lined up i think all the way through to the middle of november so please do join us whenever you can um, we will leave this live on facebook and i will upload to youtube as, as soon as, as soon as we're finished as well so you'll be able to see nico's um, wise words and join us when you can um, if you are in thailand please do come and have a have a spend some time with us in the golden triangle um, it's it, these are tough times for everybody around the world we know but uh, we can uh, we can bring you uh, can can bring you some time with elephants and some escapism and you can sit here with your with your beer um, and watch the elephants in the dusk which is which is quite lovely um, but if not uh, i promise 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 that we will get the live streams going very soon as soon as we possibly can um, so with that, I will hand you over for the for final word just to say goodbye to Nico and just say thank you very much, Nico. Anything else you'd like to say other than goodbye? Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for today. And I'm looking forward to be, to be back with you on, on this terrace and, <laughs> and see the elephants. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's a lot of uh, wonderful uh, memories that uh, we, had, uh, we have had together when we, we have been there. And, and for the people that are watching this video, please, Keep in mind, and um, when you get information about the elephant, you have to check twice and don't take any information about the elephant for granted. It's um, it's a world that is really it's not black and white, as I say all the time. It's uh, it's a gray world as uh, the elephant skin. So don't uh, don't judge uh, people working with the elephants. Don't uh, be careful with uh, this kind of information, and especially when it's negative information. We cannot deny some bad stuff are happening for sure. But there are so many people that are really, really committing, so many people that are doing their best and, and working so hard to keep the elephant in, in a good welfare and, and to continue this relationship between the elephant and the human. So don't, don't judge them and, and be very careful with uh, what you think about them. That's it. Bye-bye and, yep. and see you soon. And don't believe what the camp tells you unless they've invited Nico or one of his colleagues behind the scenes to verify all of that. It, that that's the indep independent auditing is the vital bit. Okay, guys, thank you very much. We will see you next Wednesday and hopefully I'll get a live stream in in between as well. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>